Processing Film in the Dark Room class at PCC. Here we go. All right, so you've exposed your film. Now what do you do? It's stuck in your camera and you can't get it out and you know it's light sensitive. So if you take your film out and open up your camera, even if your film is um, totally exposed, what happens is, is that when you've exposed your film for most cameras, what will happen is that it will roll onto the other um, spool that you loaded it onto and it is now totally outside of that canister. So you don't want to open up your camera yet. You want to make sure that your camera is still closed and you're going to wind it back into that canister safely and make sure that it's all the way in there so that you can then take that quickly to the dark room and develop it. Let me get my little pointer here. Okay, so you're gonna first wind and unload the film. So depending on the camera and the film stock you use, you'll wind and unload your film in different ways. There's usually some sort of release that allows you to go back backwards and wind the film back into the canister. Uh, there, we usually call it a rewind button and it's usually on the bottom of the camera. I'll show you a picture of that in a second. Sound is actually really important when you're um, doing photography and working with film. If you have uh, hearing that is sensitive enough to pick the, these sounds up, they can be really, really helpful. It's not essential, but it's something that I've just noticed over the years. So you want a smooth sound and you want to feel a smooth reeling up when you wind your film. You don't want those little um, sprocket holes to get caught on the gears and tear. It's actually pretty fragile stuff. Once you've located your rewind button, you want to load your film back onto the reel and place it into your, sorry. <laughs> so let's, let's do that first. The next step would be once you get that canister free of your camera, it's ready to roll on your, your reel and put into the tank. Uh, you're going to do that step in complete darkness. And there are um, materials that we'll go through in just a second where you will want to match all of your supplies, essentially metal with metal and plastic with plastic. So metal reels go with metal tanks, plastic reels go with plastic tanks. Again, you'll see examples of that when we're working in the lab. Once you're done doing all of that, it's safe in that tank. There's a light tight lid with a little light trap on there and you are ready to process your film. So this is now a, a light safe area. So once your film is in the tank, you're good to go. When it's in the camera, you want everything to be nice and dark. Don't open up your camera until it's completely wound back up, right? When you're loading your reel, that's when you wanna make sure that you're in complete darkness. Unlike the dark room, red light will expose your black and white film. Black and white film is panchromatic, meaning it is sensitive to all the colors, right? So make sure that you do that in complete darkness. We have changing bags and we also have a changing loading room. So either of those might be more comfortable for you. I absolutely encourage you to try both. There is a picture here, but it's not showing up. Hmm. Oh, there we go. That was me. I think that was my fault. All right, wind and unload your film. Okay, so what you see here is underneath the camera, there's a little button, and that button needs to be pressed while your other hand is occupied winding the film back into that uh, cartridge into that canister for your film. So that's all light, nice and light, light tight for you. And once it gets back in there, you're ready to pop this open. And um, that would be okay to do in regular daylight. Couple things to note, you only wanna develop the same film in the same tank. Different speeds and different brands of film don't necessarily all develop at the same time and at the same temperature. 
all of the variables that we use are going to be as consistent as we can make them. We don't have folks use different chemistry. However, some of you may be using different film, and it can be a difference of 30 seconds up to a minute or even two minutes sometimes, depending on the kind of film that you use. So what I do is I typically group all of my films of one type to an, another kind of in my photo shoots. And if, if that doesn't necessarily happen, I usually write the dates um, or I'll bag them up, some way of grouping them and making sure that I've, I've got, you know, all my FP4s or all my HP5s or whatever film I'm using that I'm using the same kind so that I don't need to tweak anything because it's all going to go in the same chemistry um, in the same tank. Do you have time to do your developing? So at the very beginning, it's going to take you probably about five or 10 minutes to load your reels. That's okay. It goes much faster when you feel more comfortable and you're only going to get faster with practice. So just keep slogging away until it gets a little bit more convenient. Um, and, you know, don't let anybody pressure you for time. If you are in the dark, you're feeling like you just cannot deal and you're needing some air, it's fine to put your unwound film gently in that tank. There's no chemistry in there yet. It's still dry. Put your negative in that tank. Put the lid on safely. And you can come out and take a breather and let somebody else go in for a little bit. And then you can try again. That's really the best way to do it. Otherwise, you're just going to be, you know, giving yourself a coronary or something. I remember being totally claustrophobic in these little, little tiny film changing rooms. And um, it was really unpleasant. So don't do that to yourself. It's okay. Uh, as far as processing your film, the whole process from, you know, getting it wet and pre-soaking to drawing it and being able to retrieve it from the dryer, I would say give yourself 45 minutes to an hour. If you have less time than that, do not load your film on a reel and put it in a tank because you will not have time to finish it and you will not be able to take it out after that point. We only have a limited amount of tanks. And so the tanks that you're using that you are trying to like save until the next time you can come in, uh, to develop, that's going to be needed by somebody else in the meantime, right? Remember, we share the space. So be really, really considerate and make sure that if you don't have at least an hour to get your film developed, that you figure out something else that you can do to be efficient with your time. If you go, you know, make images and finish off another roll of film or something. If you do need your, to set your loaded tank aside for whatever reason, put your name on a piece of tape, on a piece of tape, put the film and the film speed on that tank because no one will remember, including you, and make sure that you leave that with the tech or the instructor. That is kind of an emergency thing. Like I said, we don't have enough tanks for everybody to have their own personal tank. Is there room at the sink? We have a pretty crowded area. If there's not room at the sink in the film changing area, um, I would recommend seeing if the middle sink in the dark room or the first sink is in use. If not, you're free to actually go in there and do some of your work in there. The problem with that is that you're gonna be under the red light. Um, so it'll be a little bit harder for you to see, but actually the space is kind of a luxury. So that's what I would do if I were you. All right, tanks and reels, preparing to roll your film. So the things you're going to need, um, this is a photograph. This is really gross. Sorry about that. This is a photograph early last year when I first came into the dark room of the, um, the cabinet where we keep our tanks and reels. So you're going to need one reel for each roll of film you're putting into the tank. The narrow wheel, uh, reels are for your 35 millimeter film. The bigger ones are for your 120 medium format film. Um, the small tanks are going to take two 35 millimeter reels or one 120. A large tank is going to take two 120 millimeter reels or three reels that are for 35 millimeters. So you can really, you know, get a lot done at the same time. I would say your very first roll that you um, develop, don't put all your rolls in there. That's literally putting like all your eggs in one basket. If something goes wrong, you still want to have another chance to make something come out. So if you 
put things in in the wrong order or accidentally pour like boiling hot water in there. I don't know what could go wrong. Crazy things happen. Uh, you don't want all your film that you expose to just be blank or totally exposed wrong. So for the very first time, especially, you know, the very, very first roll, go ahead and just put your tank, uh, your empty tank with your film in the bottom, the reel with the film in the bottom, and then the reel that's empty, go ahead and put that up top. Make sure they are dry and clean before you use them and before you put them away. That's part of your uh, like 15 to 20 minute cleanup at the end of the, the day. So you're gonna want a metal tank with a reel and lid. So there's a tank, there's the reel, there's your lid. That lid has another little lid that pops off and that actually has this nice little like, um, can I draw? Oh yeah, I can draw. It has kind of this cool little thing where it's like, this is the top of the lid. This is what it looks like, you know, from like a profile view. That's the part, the lip that goes around. And actually under here, there's another little like flying saucer thingy like this. It's not red, but just so you can kind of see. And what happens is that you pour the chemistry in here and it kind of goes that way. So it drips down into the tank or pours out of the tank. But this little red saucer, this is a light trap because that light cannot go in its typical straight line, it gets blocked, right? So it doesn't let the light get in here, All right? So that's kind of a nice, safe safe way to, to do that. So make sure you have the little cap as well as the big one, that it fits on here. The other things you're gonna want are a pair of scissors. You're gonna want a bottle opener. And then again, you wanna make sure that you have written down what your film is and that you're grouping it all together. Once you're ready to go, you're going to turn the lights off. Once it's in the tank, lid is on. Then you can turn the lights back on and you're ready to get out of there. There's a whole other video that I have on here and that I will also post that not only lets you listen, but also explains the process of winding your film onto that reel. Now, I typically work with 120 film, so as much as I can, I'll try to use 35 millimeter, but a lot of my sample videos are with 120. It's not a huge difference between the two. So a lot of the same principles would apply. Okay, so, oh, here we go. On the right-hand side here, you see an, an example of um, plastic reels and a plastic tank. This is our sink area. It's pretty crowded. Um, I try to keep it as clean and as organized as possible, but you know, there's a lot of us using the space. So if we can all do a little bit, that would be awesome. So here's what you're gonna do to prepare. You've got a timer right here. You've got actually all the steps written down for you up on the cabinet. The temperature of your water is really important. You want it to be anywhere between 68 and 70 degrees. And we actually have a chart that lets you know, depending on your film, the temperature that you've got for your water, and the um, chemistry that you're using, that there's a particular time of development that you're going to use. And that's super important because that is the most consistent way of getting good results, meaning you get stuff on your film. So know what the temperature of your solutions are. If you have a chance and the luxury of space, you can prepare your chemistry ahead of time and let it regulate to room temperature, which is about 70 degrees. You can also use a thermometer that will tell you exactly how hot or cold it is. Tap water is pretty, pretty predictable, but you know, don't always trust it um, unless you've got like a temperature gauge on your faucet like we do over at Sylvania. Chemistry, you're gonna need a working solution, meaning your film developer. You're gonna need a working solution of fix. And the timer, you can use the wall timer. I really love these. Or you can use an app called Massive Developer App on your
Um, once you do the developer and it's done, uh, you can go ahead and pour that out. Do not take the lid off. That's what that little mini lid and the light trap are for. Take the little mini lid off, pour that uh, developer out, and then you want to use um, water actually as stop. What that does is it stops the developer proce developing process from continuing. Um, go ahead and rinse that out for a minute. What you can do is you can fill up your tank, shake it back and forth, just kind of rinse everything out, pour that out, do that a couple times for about a minute. And then once the stop um, kind of wash is done, you're going to pour fix into that, that tank. And after that's done, you're going to wash your film. Once the fix process is complete, so not a minute more, not a second more, then your film is ready to be exposed to the light because what the fix does is it washes away the developer, the undeveloped silver, right? So there's nothing left for uh, exposure to actually, you know, take, take to. So after that, you're going to go ahead and do the wash and you're going to agitate, fill and agitate, fill and agitate. The Ilford video goes over this really, really well. Two different ways to go ahead and use the timer. You can use the Brow Lab timer that's just right there. There's two of them at the sink. You're welcome to those. The long arm is the seconds, the short arm is the minutes. You do need to track your time. Uh, you absolutely must track your time because that is typically the one place where everything would go wrong and it's the easiest thing to make um, really consistent and it's the easiest thing to make mistakes on. Massive Developer is something that my students actually introduced me to, and it's a great app. It's totally worth it. I don't remember how much it costs. It's not that expensive. I think it's like five bucks or something. Absolutely worth it. It has both a regular daylight as well as a safe light mode, so you're, you can use this even in the dark room. Um, if you're going to be using the sinks in the dark room when you're developing your film, this would be a great option for you. And there's sounds, and anyway, it's just a really great way to. to keep everything nice and um, um, predictable and really, really easy to use. If I need 30 milliliters, 10 goes into three, 30, three times, right? So I could do three to 27 and that would make 30. So that's kind of how I do it because I always get very like math phobic. So that's how I figured it out. Um, make sure that you double check your numbers. If it's a little off, it's fine. If it's um, a really valuable piece of film that you're developing, like your final or something that you really treasure, be as precise as possible. This is when photography is a little bit more like baking. Fix. When you are done with the fix, you can tell whether or not it's good by dropping some hypo check in there. I'll show you that in the lab, but you just need a couple drops. If it looks clear, it's fine. There's not too much silver in the solution. You're ready to use it again. We can reuse it until it's absolutely exhausted. If the fix is exhausted, and that sometimes can happen very quickly, so I would never trust it. If you see someone is done with their fix and they don't test it and they give it to you and they say, oh, it should be fine, I just mixed this. Test it anyway, because if you don't fix your film, you know what's going to happen. And that sucks. When you test your fix with a hypo check, if you get something that looks like snot or somebody dropped milk into your tequila or something disgusting like that, that is the hypo check reacting with the levels of silver in the fix, and it is not usable any longer for you. So at that point, you will either get a tech or the instructor and we will recycle it for you. We have a fixed recycling or fixed uh, silver recovery machine that actually filters out the silver in the system. And there's a company that comes and picks it up and makes money off of the silver. It gets turned into bracelets or I don't know, something. So anyway, um, it never, never, never goes down the drain. Um, if there's a drop that gets down the drain, if you accidentally spill, always just let us know best practice is to flush with a lot of water, but what it actually does is it's very poisoning to the sewer system. It poisons our drinking water and it kills fish and animals and all the lovely things in the world that we really cherish and we don't want to poison any more than we already are. So 
it would be best for you not to drop it down the drain. Um, 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 let's see, everything that you mix, you need to know what it is. So please make sure that if you are mixing fix, it is in a fix bottle. If you mix fix and you put it into the developer, what's gonna happen if that gets contaminated? You're gonna mess up somebody else's chemistry. So again, cross-contamination is a really big deal. So please review this on your own. If you have any questions, always ask. Um, make sure that if there's anything that spills or anything that you notice that's kind of a hazard and you're like, I don't want to touch that. I don't know what that is. Get an instructor or a tech. That's our job. So we have an Ilford video on developing black and white film. We have another video on cutting and sleeving negatives. And then the next step after this would be taking your negatives and making a contact sheet. All of these videos in the attached file for this PowerPoint are going to be um, available for you to click on. I also will have links. So these will all be available for you. And I hope this was really helpful.